On to this conversation now, Africa Tukun is joining the global community in celebrating International Literacy Day, which was observed this past Friday. The NGO is dedicated to transforming the lives of disadvantaged South African children and youth through education. Is enough being done to provide quality education to underserved communities in South Africa? Well, to unpack this, I'm joined by Nelly Zembe from the Africa Tukun Foundation. Good evening to you, Nelly. Thank you very much for joining us here on Newsnight. So the literacy crisis in South Africa has been an ongoing conversation. Um, basic literacy amongst children has decreased over the years. There's also a large percentage of children who are unable to read uh, with meaning. So the crisis is a, a concerning one. Let's, let's unpack the crisis and, and when it comes to your opinion and your view, how bad it is in South Africa. Thanks, Abigail. Thanks for having me. Um, so the biggest thing that we're seeing here is that COVID has made a situation that was bad even worse. Okay. Um, we've got children who are going into grade one without being able to actually understand the basic letters of the alphabet and therefore then they can't read. And then when they can't read, they usually then retained a grade. And so we're then seeing that, you know, having a ripple effect into grade repetition and grade repetition is also good then got a link to school dropouts and failing matric and so it's really ultimately linked to even accessing the economy the the situation is not just about reading it's about how well we're preparing the children to access the economy mm. and where does where does this stem from you've mentioned now that you know it's gotten worse post covid mm. but this problem was there before covid and it's gotten worse now mm. so what are the concerning issues what needs to be changed what needs to be altered and fixed for us to start moving forward in a positive way so there's a lot of layers to this, um, and the problem is at a macro level. So a lot of the solutions that are being suggested are also at that level. But you find that there's a lot of interventions that have started to come up, such as after-school programs, and this is where Africa Tukun comes in. But um, to just unpack what needs to happen and where the problem is coming from, mm -hmm. it's really a structural issue, right? It's a, it's a historic and it's a structural issue where schools and the majority of the schools are under-equipped to support children through the capacity of the teachers, the resources that are available, because the majority of our children are going to quintile one, two, and three schools that we know are not really equipped for, for supporting kids. Mm. Mm. And let's talk, obviously, the education department and teachers have a huge role to play, but let's also touch on, on the responsibility and role that the family dynamic has, um, the parents mm. and the siblings have, mm. in sort of nurturing and cultivating an environment that includes reading and promotes it. Yeah, absolutely. And we did see this during the COVID lockdown, right, that the role of families and parents was really highlighted when it comes to, you know, how they support the learning of the children and the achievement of their learning outcomes. So it's, it's almost like the, the thirst to want to learn mm -hmm. comes from the families. And so we see that the more education the parents have and the more willing parents are to actually support the children, the more children are getting you know, involved in reading, reading competitions, extracurricular activities. It all comes back to the family. Mm. Yeah. And let's, let's touch on the issue of accessibility. Mm. Um, are there still struggles and loopholes when it comes to accessibility? Are we still seeing children not having access to libraries and, and books? Where do those issues stem from? Mm. So schools are under-resourced, right, um, the majority of schools. The, mm. the schools that can, the ones that have resources, are your quintal five schools and your private schools. And so access really is not just about getting into a school. It's also about the quality of the school that children are getting access mm. to. It's about the resources that they're able to access. So it's not just about a physical book anymore. Um, are we equipping them to be able to access computers, to access reading, um, digitization of learning? So I think when we speak about just getting into to school there's quite a lot that has been done in terms of investing into that which is which is progress right when we compare South Africa to other countries but now we've reached a stage where we need to look at what type of access are we actually giving to the children mm. I was reading an article I think it was a, a couple of weeks ago and it was quite interesting because it was speaking about parents not having the confidence to read for their children mm. in the privacy of their own home. And I, I found yeah. that to be interesting, mm. you know, that maybe um, the focus should also be shifted to, to the parents and, and how mm. comfortable they are um, yeah. with reading. Yeah, absolutely. And remember, for the majority of our children, it's not just parents. It's also 
grandparents, right? 100%. It's caregivers. It's the nature of how we're caring for children in South Africa. So you've got, you know, parents who are traveling for work or just aren't available to care for children. And so children are left in the care of grandparents. And so mm -hmm. if you look at the literacy of caregivers at that level, at that age, they're even lower than actual parents. And so there are a lot of nuanced issues there when it comes to caregiving and the literacy levels of children that, like you said in the beginning, really come back to what is that home environment. Mm. So how do mm -hmm. we go about then nurturing that love for reading? What are some tips or advice that you can mm. provide for maybe parents and families watching at home? Um, mm. Is it just making sure that there's a bedtime story being read every night before bed? Uh, is it making time maybe after homework time to sit and read with your, your children? Uh, what sort of advice would you give to families when trying to navigate this issue? So, I mean, parents are already burdened, right, with yeah. the day-to-day -day trying to, you know, provide for their families. And so I really think this is where Africa Tukun plugs in. Community programs like Africa Tukun come in as a support to not just the schools, but to the parents as well, to say we're an ally for making learning fun, right? How can we plug in for some of the things we can speak about equipping parents, but you know, ultimately we want to be able to use the resources that are available, especially in the communities where mm -hmm. it's already, you know, there's a lot of disadvantage there. So um, leaning on community programs that are, that are providing resources that aren't available in the home mm. would be my biggest tip. And one of those uh, happened last week, Friday, on Literacy Day, where you engaged with communities mm -hmm. as Africa took in. Just talk us through the day and yeah. what you observed. So the day itself is just a spotlight on something that has been happening throughout the whole year, right? So we're really just highlighting that this is what's happening in the center. Come and see how excited the children are to be reading. And children love anything that's got competition in it, right? As long <laughs> as you say somebody's going to win something, right? They yeah. get super excited about it. And what we also liked about um, last week Friday was that we are bringing in digitization into this. So it's not just reading a physical book. We're starting to expose parents to even reading itself has evolved. We've got an app where the children can, you know, lo pick a book that they want. They can read it. We can monitor their pace of reading. All of those things have, have advanced quite a lot. And so just having parents experience that and see that these are the possibilities through an after-school program helps us to also engage with them, to engage with the children. Mm. And yeah. when engaging with these, these children, and uh, I saw one clip where a young boy, I think, was, was reading to um, the audience that was there. Are you finding that children are becoming more and more confident uh, after observing these programs? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, it's, it's, a, it's like a secondary effect of it, but quite an important one because mm -hmm. then it then translates to all of their other learning, right? Yeah. So it might just look like we're reading sentences, but once a child, you know, grasps that, they apply that kind of confidence to all of their other areas of learning in their lives, whether it comes to sports and other subjects. Mm. Yeah. Let's expand on the theme for uh, World Literacy Day this year. It is uh, literacy for a sustainable future. How do you interpret mm. that? I think it comes back to my initial point about accessing the economy, right? Like, we, we can't look at it as just reading and it's a luxury. Some people can and some people cannot because it's really ultimately linked to rates of unemployment, how well children can access tertiary education, further training. So just that chain of when a child can read and they can read according to what's expected of their age group, mm -hmm. it makes it easier for them to finish school in the expected time. And when they finish school, they're not just finishing as well, they're finishing with good grades and therefore they can then access tertiary education, they can access tertiary education with bursaries or, you know, college, and then they can, you know, then access the economy because we all know that um, the more tertiary education you have, the more education you have, the easier it is for you to access the economy. Mm. So I like to look at that chain of, it's not just about an alphabet when you're looking at a at a grade one child, you know, reciting the alphabet and the letter sounds, that it really just goes all the way up to their adulthood. Mm. Yeah. And then just in closing, Nelly, we all have a part to play in er eradicating this crisis. We've touched on, you know, the family dynamic and, and what some of the expectations are there. Uh, as an NGO, we've touched on the work that you do. But when maybe uh, mm. navigating government's role, um, what would you like to see happen? Um, selfishly, I would like to see more support for the community-based programs that are supporting education and that are supporting communities, mm -hmm. but also education reform. So at a macro level, I think it's time that we really pay more focus to the kind of reform that is needed from a teacher capacity and from a resourcing and from an accountability measure 
perspective of how do we hold the education system accountable, mm -hmm. not just as community programs, but as parents um, and as even the tertiary education to bring it back to holding schools accountable. 100%. Nelly, thank yeah. you very much for your time, for sharing your insights and the amazing work that you do with your organization. Thank you very much for joining thank us you. here tonight. My absolute pleasure. That was Nelly Zembe from the Africa Tikkun Foundation just chatting to us about uh, what they got up to on World Literacy Day that we observed this past Friday and also unpacking the ongoing literacy crisis that we are observing in South Africa. But still to come,